The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. You're listening to the Sports Scramble Podcast, where four friends serve up a weekly plate of sports with a side of SEC bias. Now, here are your hosts, Chet, Jacob, Wade, and Tyler. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of the Sports Scramble Podcast. And it feels like it's only the three of us. Jacob, we miss you. Come back to us. We know he's alive. Last episode, we didn't know if he was live or not. We hadn't heard from him in like two weeks. But the man is busy with work and school and play. He's coaching a high school golf team. He's just doing everything. He's wow. driving down I-10, seeing live golf trucks drive by on his way to Home Depot to close up. He called me yesterday. He's like, you won't believe what I just saw. in. Gulfport, Mississippi. I was like, what? He said, a live golf tour truck just drove by me on the interstate. I was like, what? He was like, yeah, they're I guess gonna they're going to set up camp at the preserve. They're going to be a new event. Maybe they've uh, they've heard us and they're interested in sponsoring the high school that Jacob's coaching at. <laughs> they're going to they're going to they're going to take over the good old St. Patrick's and come come. Uh, we'll have Greg Norman. He'll be uh, the assistant coach to Jacob out there. But uh, it's uh, get some Ian Poulter plaid Catholic schoolboy golf pants. <laughs> there you go. There, hey, we already had like the uh, the, the green and red plaid. Um, I think the girls had to wear them as, as skirts, so they just just swap into some pants for the boys and rock and roll. But it's a Monday, we did record last night on Sunday, we recorded on Monday, and uh, it's a good thing we did because we'll just start right off with Tyler. Your favorite player in the NFL, Derek Carr, is coming to the hometown Saints. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I think, honestly, it's better than what the Saints have. Personally, that's how I feel about it. A lot of people are saying that it's not going to ultimately take us to the Super Bowl. Well, that's not really the goal, really, for the Saints uh, right now, especially in the NFC South division, where he's Derek Carr is going to be the best quarterback in the division by far, unless it's happened like Tom Brady comes out of retirement or something like Which that. Which is but rumored. Who knows? Rumors who knows? All this is here. rumors. Uh, but I think all in all, uh, it's a good signing. Uh, ultimately, that this is going to leave the open door for now Jameis Winston. Now, I've heard some rumors that he's going to be cut. So that ultimately makes sense. Uh, Andy Dalton's probably out of his way. He was already a free agent and He'll hit the free agent market on March 15th, whenever the new new league year begins. Uh, so, pretty much the only you have is Taysom. Taysom Hill is playing pretty much any position you can think of on the field. So, I ultimately think a quarterback is still a position of need heading into late April when the Saints are on the clock. I can personally don't think it's going to happen in the first round. I think they're going to go either defense or, or offense, somebody like that. They're not going to go quarterback anymore, but. I could see them going quarterback uh, as early as the third round, maybe a guy like Kenneth Hooker or go in the later rounds uh, in Stetson Bennett. Yeah, yeah you had Bennett in your mock draft. draft. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Over there on uh, Gridiron Heroes, go check out Tyler's writings, of course. It's always the best of the best. You see it on our Twitter whenever he puts out an article. Um, an yeah, interesting the one. mock draft, the first the first one you had Hinden Hooker in like the third or fourth round, I think. And now you're you're thinking Stetson Bennett later. I think it was like round six. What made you uh, make the change there? Well, I he wasn't available. Hendon Hooker uh, was taking mm. actually in the second round, uh, which was like okay. Since uh, Hendon Hooker was gone, I didn't really like Aiden O'Connell from Purdue. Uh, really, I just went with Stetson Bennett. Uh, he's a proven winner. The, the really the main question mark that everybody in the scouts have is his size. He's five eleven. 192 pounds, so he's very short, but New Orleans has seen short quarterbacks and it's working out pretty good. Drew Brees, he was pretty much the same guy coming out of college, coming out of Purdue. So I just like Stetson Bennett. I loved his story as a, as a walk-on and then transferred from Georgia, his dream school. Won back-to-back national championships. So really played well against Solid Two last games against Ohio State. Name one of the Heisman finalists. So I think that if you get a guy, know that he's already aged. I think he's like 25, 26, kind of the same scenario you're dealing with Hendon Hooker. But if you can just really sit behind Derek Carr for now that Derek Carr is under a four-year contract and he's going to be 37 by the time he's probably out the door, maybe retires after that, you'll have Seps and Bennett uh, potentially ready to go. So I think that would be a really good fit. 
I like that he's proven, you know, because yeah, we got all these project quarterbacks that might go in the top 10, like Anthony Richardson or Will Levis. I mean, I like the value all the way down there in round five to get a guy that's a two-time national champion. I mean, heck, even the knock on Bryce Young is the size. Yeah. So you're getting a guy who's just as proven as Bryce Young in the same size, but and five rounds later, good. four rounds later, that's good value. Yeah. I mean, Bryce Young came in at a whopping five foot ten and one eighth of an inch. That's what I like to tell people how tall I am. Two hundred and four <laughs> pounds. He's looking a little pudgy out there. Um, if he's drafted in the first round, which he most likely will be by by Houston Texans, claiming him as the team now, unless the Saints start winning again. Um, it would make him the lightest first round quarterback drafted since at least two thousand and six. So yeah. he can be. Yeah, that's because Kyler Ragdoll Ragdoll back in there, but... in his shoes. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. true. Uh, but I would like Stetson to the to the Saints. Just gotta watch him though. He just got that DUI or not DUI that uh, public intoxication in, in, in Dallas. Yeah, you got uh, he'd be good at that in New Orleans. Uh, we got that public <laughs> intoxication in Dallas. It might not be a great pairing with all Urban the Street. Boys. <laughs> yeah, so we'll see. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I'm sure once he gets into the league, he was probably just celebrating that, that national championship. Um, some and y'all mentioned Anthony Richardson. He had a showing at the combine this week uh, or this past weekend. I mean, you think it vaults him to at least a top ten pick? Yeah, definitely. With the potential that he shows, I mean, his arm metrics were better than Patrick Mahomes. We knew he was going to run fast and and jump high, but. Not that you really need a quarterback to jump too high in the NFL, hopefully, uh, unless he's doing a sneak. But, um, you know, just the athleticism is certainly there. He just needs somebody to unlock it. Probably the closest thing to Cam Newton that we've seen come into the league uh, in the last 10 years. And we all saw what Cam did. He was a little bit more of a polished passer. But I think a team like Carolina, maybe Indianapolis that's picking, um, you know, within the top 10, in the back half of the top 10, I think they would really jump at that opportunity. Maybe Vegas as well. I did see uh, one mock draft had Seattle taking him. That 10. would be ideal because he yeah. same kind of thing with the Derek Carr situation. Yeah. Seattle has a proven veteran now for a couple of years and would probably be interested in developing a guy with, um, you know, some raw talent and, and molding right. him into the quarterback of the future. I know that Gino and, Anthony Richardson aren't exactly the same quarterback. Gino is more of a pocket passer, but the idea is that Gino could maybe teach uh, Anthony Richardson how to sling it and then combine that with his athleticism, you'd have a really good prospect. I will say one person that disappointed magnificently in the combine is our former LSU wide receiver, Kayshawn Booty, was supposed to return to the team for his senior season and led amongst – are left amongst uh, some very uh, intriguing allegations. We'll, we'll, <laughs> only time will tell if that's true. We probably will never know if it's true. Um, he won't be famous enough for us to know. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, he was like second to last, or his 40 time was like a 4-6. I think he got like a 4-5-5 five, five on one of them. Uh, he was dead last, DFL, and vertical jump at like 26 inches. Um, his... Uh, What's the one where you jump forward? The broad uh, jump. The broad, broad jump. jump. Yeah. He was like one of the last place there, which isn't a huge mm. deal for wide receivers, but it kind of tests your your explosiveness, you could say. Um, it's It was just honestly someone – Kayshawn, uh, you know, freshman year looked like number one pick. Like he was an amazing wide receiver, best freshman in, in college football. Um, and then sophomore year started hot. Injury bit him, and then junior year, of course, he had two uh, foot surgeries, and the whole thing with the team, and blah blah blah. He's just kind of he really needed to have a good showing. I mean, he's got the tape, uh, but I think he needed to have a good showing to kind of catapult himself into the top, or at least the first round. Because the beginning of the year, yeah, he was a first round pick, and then he kind of started falling, his lack of production. Uh, but he came out as a leader for LSU in the locker room and everything. Um, but he he just disappointed this weekend. I mean, where do you, Wade, where do you see Kayshawn falling? Do you think this this doesn't matter? He can 
have a good pro day, bounce back, do the drills correctly. I mean, what do you what do you think is in the hands for Mr. Young Booty? I think that he just really needs to fall in the right situation where he can learn from someone. Um, and he's probably not going to be a team's number one guy, but the talent really is there. So, I mean, you know, a team like New Orleans or, or something that is looking for a, a wide receiver prospect in rounds three or four really could use his talents and just hope that it pans out. Um, I think that another good fit, maybe like San Francisco, to me, he has the same build as Debo Samuel, but he's not nearly as fast. So if he could get that athleticism down a little bit, um, I think that would be a good fit for him. So uh, he's he's just got to get to the right situation with the right coaching because he's if he's with an inexperienced quarterback and coaching staff, I think that he'll try to you know just go about his ways, which is kind of what he did at LSU. And uh, he's a guy that's going to need some mentorship and someone that can get that talent out of him. For sure. Tyler, where do you see him going? Yeah, I agree with Wade. I think that he's got to go to somewhere where he has an, an experienced quarterback. Uh, going into the year, I thought that he was going to be a for sure first round draft pick. And, and like you mentioned, he just wasn't really like Malik neighbors really passed him up. Even guys like Jare Jenkins uh, passed him up too. That's a guy that no one has really been talking about. I think that Jare Jenkins uh, could be a steal uh, in the late round. So maybe even if he's an undrafted free agent. So I'm not really sure uh, if I can name a team or where, where that Sean can go to, uh, but I don't even think that New Orleans would, would even touch him. I think that New Orleans uh, wants a proven guy. Sean hasn't really proved himself in the last couple of years. He just has that one good year of tape that freshman year. Other than that, I, I know that in his sophomore season, he dealt with injuries, so you can't really take of that. But this year, you don't know. There's a lot of question marks whether, you know, the want to play, you know, the relationship with Brian Kelly. There's, there's too many things going on with Kayshawn. So I, I wouldn't doubt if he even slept all the way to to the third round. So if he doesn't have a good pro day, he's definitely in jeopardy of being a third a third day pick, which LSU fans would have never even thought of going into this season. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, based off his freshman year, we were all super high on him, and it just kind of went down, injuries and lack of motivation to play, things like that. So not a good luck for young Kayshawn. Hopefully he can bounce back at his pro day and make us all proud. Um, For, you know, we've been talking about the combine, the draft. You know, we got a big announcement. We're uh, Belly Up Media, Belly Up Sports, our our wonderful network hosts, are going to be hosting a live draft show uh, for all three days. And, of course, Tyler and Wade are going to be joining them at the end of round one to cover, I think it's picks 26 through 31 that uh, yep. we wanted to be on there for the Saints pick. They'll give their analysis. Um, that's probably going to be at like 10 o'clock at night for you know how long it's going to take a little while. Yeah. Uh, of course, we'll be tweeting that out as it gets closer. We're still over a month away. It would I be like our join. luck if the Saints like trade out of it and we're there. I know. <laughs> we and cover the y'all are covering Texans. somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to join y'all, but uh, there's a chance I'll be flying to Baton Rouge that night. I may be on an airplane or at least uh, be headed there in the car. I don't know. So uh, I, I was like, well, we'll let these two guys handle it. I know they got vast draft knowledge. Tyler has been – he might as well go right for like on three with his recruiting and <laughs> combine knowledge and everything. So uh, – but stay tuned. Uh, I think it's April 27th. Yeah. Uh, that sounds – is it right. the, I think it's 29th. It's the last day of April and then goes into the first weekend of May. Perfect. Last yeah. weekend of April. Last Thursday of April. Yep. It might be the 28th. I don't, I don't know. know. It's, it's the, the last week. The last Thursday in April. Make sure you're tuned into the Belly Up Sports YouTube channel. 10 36 p.m. Right on the dot. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. You know, free agency, like we mentioned, Derek Carr to the Saints. Uh, Lamar Jackson is still undecided. You got potentially Tom Brady coming back and going to the Dolphins. Probably not going to happen, but that was the rumor of the combine. Um, another interesting person who's been spending his nights in complete darkness and silence is Aaron Rodgers. Has anyone heard from him? Has, has he come out of his darkness retreat yet? He explained something to – I thought they did like a – tour of the place where he was staying i don't know if he accompanied the nfl reporter during that or not but um yeah he's been pretty quiet but i mean if you're the jets you got to think there'll be a full court press here soon to go get him 
if they want to be serious about contending. But another team you just mentioned, Miami, if there are any doubts about Tua and his arm strength and ability to stay healthy, I mean, Aaron Rodgers is your most proven candidate uh, under the age of 40. So I think that that would make a lot of sense, too, if he wanted to get down to South Beach. Um, certainly they have the weapons with Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle that, you know, Aaron Rodgers has been clamoring for for years in Green Bay. Uh, I think that, yeah, that would be a, a good spot for him. <laughs> so the uh, another the rumor mill was churning today. That's why it's a good thing we recorded on Monday because it was just like every five minutes it was boom, boom, rumor, rumor. Man, it's rumor. A Adam Schefter, hey, the league we starts report. on Monday. League yeah, I guess Monday, I guess we got to we got to move our recordings to Monday nights. I don't know. It's it's all the hot news comes out, uh, but. Uh, there was, you know, not a huge piece of news, but Andy Dalton potentially going to the 49ers to be a backup, which they could have used in the playoffs. Um, so the Saints would lose him, and that's why I think it probably leads to Tyler's theory of drafting like a Hendon Hooker or Stetson Bennett as a backup to be groomed. Um, but NFL news, there's not a whole lot going on. I mean, the combine and the draft, people are going to be putting out of like 40 more mock drafts before draft night. We, I, we need to we'll put one out draft week of at least I guess our like top 10 picks I don't know we'll come up with something um we're not I'm not an expert like Tyler so uh and I know wait it goes like Tyler and then Wade is like right under Tyler just because I say Tyler writes the the mock draft articles you're still up there <laughs> it's okay I, I care yeah. more about the draft I think than the regular season <laughs> but yeah. hey if he reads them then he knows as much as I do I do read hey. them and I'm particularly interested and invested now that I have this dynasty team because I have to look at the guys running their underwear on a Sunday morning while I have my coffee and figure out which one has the right size hand uh, to <laughs> be a long-term NFL star. And let me tell you, if you're doing that with your fiance right beside you, prepare to be disappointed because, you know, you're just not meeting these guys' uh, measurements. You know, yeah, you're talking not running as fast as something, then, right? Else. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I saw an article about Will Levis comes in at 11 and a half inches, and people are like, Whoa, when'd they start that measurement? And then, and then they're like, Add that it came in hand size, and they're like, Let's zoom in and, and watch his stride. Yeah, and that's what you're yeah. looking at. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it gets a little creepy there at the combine. You got a bunch of guys running around in their underwear, uh, but needless to say. Football fans are crazy and they all love it. So we got the draft coming up soon. We'll uh, continue to preview that as the time goes on. Um, let's jump in to the heartbreak of the weekend. I didn't even do a dog in them segment because I was so heartbroken from our, our parlay. So we'll get into uh, the Armor Palmer, Ar Arnold Palmer Invitational recap. Uh, it was an elevated event for the PGA Tour. I think the winner got like six million dollars or something, something crazy. Kirk Kitayama ended up winning it. Came dirty the last hole to win it, and uh, his it was his first ever PGA Tour win. He's played in fifty PGA Tour events, has a lifetime career earning of three million dollars, doubled it by winning on Sunday. So congratulations to Kurt. And we would have doubled our total winnings period in gambling if our parlay would have hit. Um, we had Roy McIlroy top five. Max Holma top 10, Jason Day top 20. So and close. boys, Sunday morning, we were riding high. Rory was tied for fifth. Max was tied for eighth. And Jason Day was tied for 12th. And we, the vibes were electric. I have never been so glued in to a golf tournament besides like a major. I mean, I was watching every shot. I was looking for alternate cams. Or what? I was following Rory Cracker on Twitter. I knew what he ate for breakfast that morning. I had the <laughs> notifications turned on. I tried to find a Max Homa tracker, and there's not one that exists. And I can see why, because he let us down. I love Max Homa, but man, he bogeyed number 18 to go from T11 to T14. He was one shot off of being uh, like top eight. We needed him top 10. And uh, I was like, Tyler, if he would have parred that, he'd still be tied 11th because then the person that was tied for 8th, bogeyed, moved him down and shifted everybody up from 11th to tied for 10th because of how the golf rankings work. So Max Homo was one shot off. 
We had Jason Day finish tied eighth. Rory finished second. He almost won the whole dang thing. I mean, he was like 40th on Friday. Tyler was like, ah, we were like, oh, it's over. There's no chance. There's no way Rory makes top five. He almost wins the damn thing. And then Max, Max Hole <laughs> misses the five foot bar putt on 18. Tyler and I were, were talking as we were watching it. I mean, Tyler, explain on 17 when he made the 35 foot birdie putt, the, the emotion that came out of both of us. I mean, yeah, the vibes were electric. Uh, he was uh, in the contention at the moment whenever he made that 34 foot putt. He was tied 11th. Uh, and really, all we needed was a really a par to kind of be in it because we needed some some chaos. So, well, ultimately, the chaos happened. And then uh, the 500 people finish uh, tied for 10th. Uh, but going into 18th, that's, we went from the highs of highs to the lowest of lows. He was set up uh, for, uh, what was it, like an 11-foot birdie putt. He missed that. Yep. And then he missed a 5-foot par putt, which ultimately destroyed our hopes and dreams of finally winning a clutch parlay. So uh, if you need me in the betting world, I'm going to be on a hiatus after this loss, and uh, I'll see you guys um, maybe never. We'll see you at the Masters. <laughs> yeah, maybe yeah. March Madness. <laughs> yeah, what stinks is we had a top 10 finisher, a top 20 finisher, and a top 5 finisher. and Just the wrong guys. <laughs> Jason Day being a top 10, probably if we could have made our custom parlay with him in the top 10, that probably would have shot the odds way up. Yeah. But yep. I don't think we saw that coming. And each guy... I feel like disappointed us at some point in the weekend and then like saved us at some point in the weekend. And then yeah. they all fell to crap. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Rory started Sunday. He was tied. He was bogey bogey off the road. And then he, and he, yeah, he goes two over to start it. I was like, Oh my gosh, Rory, what are you doing? You're the number yeah, we were, three We weren't even worried about Max uh, going into Saturday. Yeah. Max, he was the most consistent he, one. He was rolling. <laughs> yeah. I think he shot what, like 70, 71 consistently throughout i think saturday he was in the 60s yeah he was like 65 or 66 like he got off to the gates hot rory was the really the absolute he went from like a slow start to the saturday sunday i know that he had a slow start on sunday but after those two bogeys he really never looked back and like you mentioned he had a chance uh, to win it uh but congratulations to kurt kitty i'm getting your first uh win on the pga tour that's always a, a tremendous thing i mean it's hard to win this, especially at Bay Hill. Bay Hill is uh, definitely a tough oh, course. Oh, that was a uh, tough the, course. The greens can just the be course. abysmal. They were so, so hard. I was watching it. When the yeah. when the shots would hit, you would hear a resounding thud. Yeah. It was like somebody was dropping a piece of concrete into the earth. I was like, holy. I mean, the balls were hitting and just skyrocketing off of the green. It was insane. Yeah. I mean, it was just a bogey fest. Um, but – Hey, I mean, Scotty made a push for a while, mm-hmm. uh, but like you said, Kirk Kitayama got it done. He had a triple bogey on Sunday and managed to fight back from that and ended up winning yeah. by a stroke. So Vegas remember that. And Spieth was in contention no. too. He was uh, oh, he got yeah. the pin under as well. I mean, I I told you going into the week. I know that you had some doubts about him, but I just had a feel on that Spieth was going to turn it on. He usually turns it on uh, when the month comes to March. Uh, so I think that Spieth uh, is getting hot at the right time, especially uh, with TPC Sawgrass, the course that's going to be next at the players, uh, and then the Masters uh, weekend is slowly creeping up on us. Yeah, so we'll uh, – you know, Jordan Spieth is an eye, uh, someone to keep an eye out on because he's been yeah. hot lately. And he, he had 11 putts through 12 holes on Sunday because he holed out one of his chips. It, it, the, the man was just making – I mean, he had like a 12-foot putt that he started walking in when it was still four feet from the hole. <laughs> and then it trickled over the left side, and he was like, oh, okay. Um, he, he got away with that one. But I think golf – you said it over the weekend, Wade. Golf is a is a better sport when Jordan Spieth is hot. He's been in a little bit of a down the past couple of years. Um, <laughs> but if he can find some, some momentum, start contending in some majors, we could see Spieth win a – he's won two, hasn't he? Two majors he, so he far. He got on a that. hot streak early in his career, and I think he did win two yeah. or three. But, you know, he was supposed to be that next American golf sensation, right. you know, from Phil to Tiger to you're supposed to see uh, Spieth kind of fill that void with maybe a guy like Ricky or Bubba Watson at the time. And they mm. kind of, uh, you know, they haven't gotten to that level of stardom. But uh, if, if you could see a Spieth and Rory or John Rahm kind of rivalry develop on the PGA, I think that'd be really good, especially with what's 
uh, happening over with Live Golf with a lot of the stars over there. Yeah, and uh, speaking of John Rahm and Rory, for the players, the featured group on Thursday and Friday is Rahm, Rory, and Scotty Scheffler. So that's, that's going to be a stellar you know, group. That one, two, group. and three. Well, that's that's just the the pairing for Thursday and Friday. The two they're they're playing together, and it's the featured group on ESPN Plus. So, oh, okay. So that's but what are their ranks in the world? I think they the, are all top five, huh? Rahm's one. Rahm's one. Scotty's two, and Rory is three. Uh, that it yeah. might have changed after this weekend. But I, I think it's still Rom one, Scotty two, Rory three. Um, but it's uh, I guess to to end the the bet talk, you can make this into a TikTok. You can clip it because I'm talking to you, Max Holma. I still love you. You were one stroke off from a from a big parlay we had, and that's okay. We, we at Sports Scramble forgive you. Uh, <laughs> Just we know you're us gonna for the U.S. Open. That's yes, all I ask. we know you're gonna make it right because we got a huge bet on you to win the U.S. Open. It's it's in California. I think it's in LA. We are we are we are rooting for you, Max. Bounce back, and it'll be it'll be good to go. Um, but the players championship down there at TPC. I'm blanking on the name. Sawgrass. Sawgrass. Oh, yeah. Thank Sawgrass. you. Sawgrass. They're staying in Florida. Yeah, the home of the island. The Florida. Green, the, I, the gold man. The gold man coverage. The gold man trophy. Um, but we've got. Uh, a star-studded field. I mean, it's the PGA's, like, the fifth major, basically. Um, I don't know. Let's see who the favorite is to win. But while I'll look that up. Tyler, who's your it favorite up. to win? Okay, you've got it. What are the odds for the for uh the Rory is four? ultimately the favorite at, at 8-1. to one. Uh, John Rahm is 9-1. Uh, to one. So those are the two favorites heading into the weekend. So chat pick no the winner, there. and then we'll take the other one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've... <laughs> I, I don't know. Out of those two, I think John Rom. All right, um, so that's all. Yeah, rough. <laughs> Bait him. Yeah, he no, had you a, need he to had feed a me. Rough, rough weekend. He did. Uh, he oh. was the featured guy at nine a.m. because he was like the only so, like star <laughs> golfer playing at that yep. time, and he was yeah, like can we talk about him too. I mean. <laughs> His first round, he was what, oh, he was seven the, under. The, yeah, he was the and 18 then, leader, and then he just he ultimately off. collapsed. He and, yeah, it, that's the game of golf, man. You go from the highest of highs to lowest of lows. It's like betting for us, dude. With sweat, <laughs> exactly. They need to give him a shirt color other than pink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. The, uh, it's hot down there in Florida. He has sweat stains. Um, but the, uh, I think he's gonna bounce back. Uh, but he's just got that, that fight. He's got that dog in him. I mean, he he is the no, world's number one ranked golfer for a reason. Um, I think he probably, if he doesn't win, he's definitely in contention on Sunday at the players. Uh, but my pick, my ultimate favorite that I'm going with this weekend is Scotty Scheffler. He's people just forget about him. I mean, he went crazy last year. He's already won this year. He almost won Sunday. Um, I think he's going to get it done at the players this year. And one thing you notice with the live players not being able to play and Cam Smith winning it last year, the uh, all the ads for the players are Justin Thomas winning in 2021, not Cam Smith winning in 2022. So they just Thomas. totally, yeah, they just like totally scrubbed last year from their memory and they rolled out the JT from 20 as they should. Yeah. So, so Tyler, who's your pick to, to win it? You know me. I, I never pick like the heavy favorites. I always like to go for a sneak, a sleepy pick in this one. And mine is uh, twenty. He sits at twenty-two to one odds to take on the players, and that is none other than Tony Finau. I think that he's going to get the job done. He's. I think yeah. he's finally starting to get it together. I think that he finished uh, tied for twenty-fourth uh, this past weekend at Bay Hill. So he's. You know, he had an okay round, probably not the round uh, that he was hoping for. So. I think that he finally breaks through. Uh, we saw Jordan Spieth finally break through uh, this year after a rough start to the year. So I think that this is going to start to be the weekend that we see Tony Finau really play some good golf. And then hopefully maybe he takes that into the Masters and can finally take on the green jacket. But this weekend, give me Finau to take it. I like it. I like it. Wade, who are you looking at to, to make some cash on the weekend? All right. Well, if this hits, it is some cash because I don't even know what the odds are, but I know they're high. And I don't know. What's compelling me to say this, but the first name that popped in my head, because I knew you were going to ask me this question and I had to scramble, Sun Zhao M, Mr. Ooh. I M. 
He's always okay, in the top like 15. And he's going to find a way to get it done. You know, these foreign players like to always win the players' championship and uh, come over here and take the cake. So he plays pretty consistent golf. He's probably in the 2000 to ones range. So he's got to be. Maybe I'm going to put a dollar on it because I'm going to kick myself if that does hit and I don't. So <laughs> oh, I'm at plus 20,000 and I haven't found him yet. <laughs> I but might have passed him though. He's got more be likely there. probably Rory. Rory will take the cake, but yeah, you got so Scotty's at plus eleven hundred. Tony Finau's at plus twenty five hundred to win. Oh, Sung J Sung J M is at plus thirty three hundred to win. Okay, so um, not, it's not too terrible. like far off. That's, that's that's. I mean, shoot, you bet ten dollars, you win three hundred and thirty. Yeah, you bet ten dollars, um, you win a an iPad. Yeah, so. We're gonna. Get, uh, I already know what's gonna happen. We're gonna convince ourselves to do the same parlay: yeah. the top five, top ten, and top twenty. And then we're gonna have to do this I all over again. Power on them and, and win thirty. I bucks. think. <laughs> I think we look at the to make the cut bets, which are only we're on that sports. And we like didn't football even football like look at it for so long. Like I just sent Chet like the the three no. names. He was like, was okay, like, sure. Mark it. Boom. Guaranteed. <laughs> it ended up happening. One stroke away. Um, yep. So I said we look at some cut bets. Maybe, maybe so. We need to see if we can parlay like three guys in the top twenty. It's not going to be the plus twenty six hundred payout that we had from last weekend, but it'll be a decent payout. So let's let's look at that. I know we said hey, we one of them have been the cut bets. <laughs> so. Yeah, I think we ride with the cut bet and then maybe maybe look at a top twenty finisher. I don't know. Well, we'll we'll look around and we'll sprinkle it. We'll put it on Twitter. And I'll let the guys. I'll have to look at DraftKings. <laughs> see if anything yeah. catches my eye. We'll after this, there. after last week, and I, I'm done. But I don't know. Maybe it'll pull me back in. I'm oh, sure dude, it, it will. Was, uh, <laughs> peer pressure. Woo-hoo. It was. It was rough. I like Tyler said, highest of highs, lowest of lows. I I I jumped up screaming when it popped across my screen. Thirty Let's foot see. birdie putt. Made. You got ten dollars worth of and entertainment out of it. I guess. I mean, my dog, like my dog, jumped up because he was scared. Because I like woke him up screaming. He was, "What's going on?" He jumped in my lap, and I was like, "He made the birdie." But <laughs> I mean, I I was losing my mind. Um, but of course, all of this wonderful go- golf talk is brought to you by our friends over at Piper Golf. You can head on over to Piper Golf and use code Sport Scramble Ten for ten percent off tour quality balls at a non tour quality price. Uh. I didn't get to play golf this weekend, but I was out on the range. Of course, I wasn't hitting my Piper golf balls on the range, but, man, the, the swing was feeling good. I'm excited. So I might go out there and play this weekend. Uh, Tyler, you doing anything on March 18th? We can uh, get around together. Um, <laughs> Y'all might we'll leave Wade out. <laughs> we'll leave Wade out. He's, uh, he's a little busy that day getting married. Uh, but, Tyler, I think, Rob, it's we just at, need it's good at a weather. golf course. So if it's golf weather, that's good with me. <laughs> yep. It, it's at a golf course. You think, wait, would you mind if we teed off from the back of your ceremony? I know you're getting married <laughs> on the first tee box, but we can play from the tips. I'm getting married on the, the like, 17th tee box. <laughs> oh, even better. We'll be finishing up. Tyler will be warmed up. I'll be warmed up. It's way less likely to, to shank one into the into the wedding reception. Let me correct that. They care so much about their tee boxes. We are not getting married on the tee box. We are getting married in the area where you stand off of the tee box. Oh. oh so, like, so, in, like, okay. the rough area? Let me tell you, it was maintenance day when we were there last Monday because they don't let people play on Mondays. Right. And it was in such good condition and they had just mowed the grass. I was like, oh my gosh, like this is what a golf course is supposed to look like. Now, granted, it's probably like $300 a month. And it's probably more. It's probably way up there. there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, pretty cool. They have the ninth hole has like a waterfall feature that they made. And um, it's not a part of the play. I mean, if you hit it in the water fountain or the waterfall, it's one of our shots that are way off to the right. But um, the I would hit it through the waterfall just because just to see <laughs> yeah, might as well. It. It's not coming it. back. There's a lot of slate in the waterfall, but um, <laughs> the the um, wedding room or one of the rooms near the wedding has this giant glass panel, kind of like you would see it like a. I don't know, like a suite at a football game, and you just look out over the waterfall and the um, ninth hole. But alas, not much golf in the cards for me that week. 
Well, if Tyler, I might bring my clubs and maybe we'll sneak away somewhere. Maybe play some TPC New Orleans. TPC You're going to be playing City Park Avondale, yeah. in New Orleans. Just down the <laughs> <Yeah>. road. <laughs> we'll see. But, yeah, head on over to Piper.Golf. Use code SPORTSCRAMBLE10 for 10% off your golf balls. Um, Last little bit of golf talk. Tiger Woods is not taking part in the Players' Championship. Everybody kind of was thinking he might play to get geared up for the Masters. But ultimately, he said that he wasn't feeling well. Or actually, he didn't even say anything. Oh. Uh, he, he just didn't announce that he was going to play. So, it's not playing. I mean, if you're Tiger Woods, you can do that. Uh, when will we see him next? My vote's the Masters. I don't think he plays beforehand. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think that we'll see him in the Masters. That's that's pretty much uh, his event right there. I, he's won it multiple times. I don't blame him. TPC Sawgrass is one of the toughest courses, especially hole 17, where I would probably hit in the water every time, like uh, 99 times out of 100. Uh, so, I don't blame him for skipping this weekend and, uh, and waiting for the Masters get rested up for that big event. I, I want you to not accept any bets that I asked for Ty Woods to win the Masters. I've done it. I did it last year, and it's ultimately just a straight <laughs> loser. So just don't even – just take the money. Don't even place it. Just send it back to me when I when I've been you the money. Okay, don't, so don't allow me to place a bet on Tiger Woods to win the match. Until you see another one of our it's... little fancy parlays where he's like snuck in the top 20, and then you're like, okay, yes, let's do it. Yeah. Yeah, watch him be like top 20 is like plus 5,000, and maybe, but don't <laughs> let me place the bet on him to win it uh, because it never works out right. Uh, you know, speaking of other Tigers, we got LSU baseball just wrapped up an insane yep. weekend of runs. Uh, let's see. We scored what thirteen on Friday, twenty six on Saturday, twelve yesterday, and eleven tonight. Tyler, what does that add up to? That's uh, a lot. <laughs> like yeah, 70. quick, quick math. Uh, I know we played Central Connecticut and Butler. It was Central Connecticut's first weekend of playing this year. Uh, but to put up twenty six runs in a baseball game, pretty impressive. The Tigers are rolling. We got to talk about on Tuesday night when they played Texas. It was a battle until the ninth inning when our boy Gavin Dugas walked up, smoked one over the left field wall, three run home run to take the lead and ultimately beat Texas three to zero. Uh, if you're Gavin Dugas' doctor and you're listening, I want you to do my LASIK eye surgery because I only trust you. Because whatever you did to that man, I mean, he's a completely different ball player. So, Wade, how are you feeling about your hometown Tigers right now? I feel really good about where things are at because I think they've proven everything they can. But I will say I'm a little skeptical still um, because we have played two teams that have pitchers that can throw over 91 miles per hour, that being Iowa and Texas. And it took them a long time to get the offense going in either one of those games. And I, you know, I think that's to be expected this early on in the season. I think they'll be fine. But rather than playing cupcake teams, I would like to see us face, you know, some decent mid-majors or something or maybe playing a, another tournament before SEC play because it's all about timing, you know. And if these guys get used to 83, 84, um, to no fault of their own, they might not be ready. Week one against Texas A&M, but Texas A&M is struggling against teams that throw 83, 84, so <laughs> we might be all right. But um, – Everything's coming together. They just need a little bit more plate discipline. But uh, I'm most impressed by the pitching staff because I think yes. Paul Skeens is going to cause a lot of whiffs no matter who's in that batter's box. I think uh, Chase and Shores is, is looking really good. And then the that bullpen, you heard I mean, was dealing tonight. Oh, I mean, yeah. he struck out the first six batters he faced. And he'll probably right. move into the Saturday spot, I think, eventually. And if you can have – Riley Cooper be your top lefty option, and then Christian Little be your top righty option out of the pen. I mean, that's as good as anybody in college ball. Yeah, and uh, Ty Floyd looks great on Saturday. Um, he he struggled a little bit last year, but I think he, like you said, the the pitching this year is probably the most improved. I think of the LSU team. Like they had the bats last year, they they put up a bunch of runs, not as many as we're putting up this year. We all knew we were going to be able to hit. Um, just based on the lineup that we're rolling out there every night. But the pitching, man, is just so dominant. And it shows when you have that true ace like Paul Skeens. I mean, 13 strikeouts Friday night. And 
like you said, temper expectations. We are playing cupcake teams. Um, I don't remember who we play on Wednesday. Uh, Lamar. Uh, okay, so, you know, take it as you will. That's um, a team uh, who beat A&M during the midweek a couple of weeks ago. Oh, well, then maybe that's our first uh, – not our first challenge. We did play Texas. Uh, but – That'll be a that'll be a maybe a good midweek game, and then this weekend we play uh, uh, Sanford. Uh, they're usually a really good uh, mid major. I feel like that's a that's a university that's always making the tournament. See, and that's a yeah. good good schedule right there. I mean, you know, just getting teams like uh, Sanford or South Alabama, maybe even like Southeastern or LA Tech. You know, just some teams that are smaller and will still come play at LSU, but you know, at least give them a challenge. <laughs> yeah, well. Next week, before we play AM, we play UNO. And in the past, they have given us trouble. <laughs> yes, you and that in state rival, they're only an hour away. We are playing them in Alex Box. Um, so uh, they give us trouble. So I, I want to see us walk out there and just put like 20 on them and just drop the bat as we walk off. They see took later the like series game. against Tulane this weekend. So they yeah, Tulane's not that good this year. They have like one or two wins on the season, they're struggling, but. LSU's and like I said, it's still early. There's 56 games. Uh, we've only played 12 of them so far. I've looked great. 12 or 11 and one. Um, their biggest thing is staying healthy. That's always come back to bite us once we get into that postseason push and that push for Omaha. Uh, but and also the pitching death has always come back to bite us. And this year, I think we're set. I mean, we had our freaking backup shortstop out there pitching on Saturday, and he was throwing heat like. He, we got pitchers all over the place. I think, I think Gavin Dugas might come in and pitch an inning at one point if we're up by a bunch. I mean, who knows? I like uh, number one at pitcher. I can't remember his name. Uh, Gidry. Gavin Gidry. I, yeah. I mean, also like uh, Nate Ackenhausen. He's been dealing, uh, especially in the nasty Texas team. He, Nate. He, yeah, Nasty Nate. He gave us solid innings uh, coming yep. out of the bullpen. And Christian Little uh, – Coming from Vanderbilt, he's also uh, been solid as well. So I think I, I agree with Wade. I think the rotation, once we uh, hit SEC play, you'll the Friday night guy will be Paul Skeens. Uh, Saturday uh, will be Thatcher Hurd. I think that Sunday is when you're going to see uh, really a switch up. I think that Chase Shores is going to move to the midweek, and you're going to see Ty Floyd. I think that they, Jay Johnson is going to move experience on the Sunday role. So I think that you'll see Ty Floyd moving in that role. And you can yeah, really so rotate him to keep yeah, you could. Uh, yeah. fresh. You know, if we're playing like, you know, Kentucky one weekend or something, you could give Shores the start, and then the next weekend you could give Floyd the start, and then you know, keep and them it's gonna fresh. It's gonna determine based on if you're going for the series win or if you're going for the series yeah. sweep. If you're going for a win, you probably go with your more experienced guy. Um, but did I mean did what happened to? Did we have a guy last year who was like six foot eleven? Blake Money. Did he even, no, no, no. Uh, it was a super tall dude. Oh, Paul. He's like, yeah, yeah, he's gone. Oh, that's right. He did go to the draft. Yeah. Um, if he was still it, here, we would have the tallest like <laughs> pitching staff I mean, in the Paul, history of baseball. Paul Skeens is no joke. I mean, he's like six foot eight. Well, yeah, him and, and he, Short are both six eight. And if we had yeah. Gervais still and Blake Money, that would be taller than the LSU basketball team. <laughs> <laughs> Just put them on the court. That's our starting five. I mean, but that's talent. They probably do better than the than the men's basketball team. If we're being honest, uh, I would take KJ I mean, Williams to be a, a yeah. bullpen guy. KJ Williams has been a bright spot, but that's about <laughs> it. The uh, that's that's one thing about this year is we got some dogs on the team. I mean, we got dudes with facial hair and long hair, and tall yeah. guys. I mean, they look like For number thirty. Baseball you team. have to have a nasty beard. I mean, Ventmir to nasty Nate. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You got freaking uh, what's his name, Lefty, uh, you know, fat guy, Riley uh, Cooper, Riley Cooper. <laughs> Riley Cooper with the, <laughs> the the stronger than all tattoos on his oh, forearm. I I hope whatever the game that you pick that he uh, that he pitches on the mound. That's all I got to say. Pretty I don't care if he's Riley. coming out of the bullpen. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be Chet's dream to see Riley Cooper in person pitch. Yes, definitely. Um, and uh, we were, we're in talks of making it to a game, maybe the Alabama series end of April. I'm going to try to come in or the Mississippi uh, State. That looks like a sweep. <laughs> what uh, when did they play? Yeah, state's pitching is uh, the 12th of May after your birthday. Oh, 
Oh, that's Mother's Day. We can't, we can't can, be doing that. I gotta, I gotta yeah. see my mom on Mother's Day. Yeah, you can come um, to Baton Rouge Friday and then go. They see play your mom. like Kentucky, like in the middle yeah. of April too. We'll get you here. Yeah, for I game think I, for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm eyeing that that Alabama game. Uh, that that one might be the one I make. Uh, but you know, it's uh, it's a good time to be a Tiger fan. Uh, the women's team unfortunately lost. Don't even get me uh, started about the Bulls. Eh, there'll be a two seed that that, that call was a little ridiculous. I don't know. After seeing the eight people, I'm not sure if we're a number two seed anymore. Yeah. Well, two or three. I mean, you're still playing each other in the elite eight, so it doesn't truly matter. Just gotta you gotta get there. That's true. Yeah, I think they'll bounce back. I don't know if they're gonna win it all. South Carolina is looking pretty nasty. Yeah. Um, but I don't give think it a shot. Kim Mulkey will give it her best. She's got the number one recruiting class, I think, for next year. So we'll just, you know, keep it rolling. Uh, we're building some. Did you see the here. video of uh, Mulkey and Staley at the number one recruit for 2024's high school basketball game? It was like this Tennessee State Championship. South Carolina played Vanderbilt and LSU played Tennessee. So they were both in the state and they stuck around. For the championship game, and one is sitting on one side of the court in the first row, and the other is sitting on the other side of the court in the first row, and they're both wearing like, um, well, Staley was wearing like a hoodie with shades on the inside, and Mulkey, you know, had her bedazzled LSU jacket yeah. or something on, and they, and they just looked like two super villains <laughs> staring at each other, trying to win over this recruit. That is uh, a rivalry that is going to be brewing for years to come. Uh, between those two coaches, I'm gonna be like the LSU Bama, like in football. Oh, in the next definitely. Couple of years, I love it. I mean, we're in, we're a women's basketball and baseball school, and a little bit of football. I feel like we've uh, uh, changed which sport we yeah. are as a school uh, during our tenure at LSU. Were we like, a gymnastics we're school at one point? <laughs> we're always a gymnastics school. That's true. always a gymnastics. School. We were definitely a baseball school our freshman year, and then I think we. Our sophomore year, like most of us, were lost. I don't think we were good at really anything. Um, Wait, maybe I thought... gymnastics. And then... I mean, we had one of those years when we made a run to, what, like the Sweet 16? It was one of then, those then years Then it was basketball our junior year, and then football our yeah. true senior year. And then, I guess, nothing in our... our last year. <laughs> nothing in the last Women's year. Women's soccer, they won the SEC. Yeah. It's true. I was good in tennis. Um, that's always a guarantee. So, uh, but yeah, it's good time to be a Tiger fan right now. So, we'll just keep it rolling. Um, one thing I have an issue with is not being able to, uh, I don't care about stupid longhorn work. Okay. You join in the SEC, put the damn game <laughs> to the network. Um, and just let us watch it on that. Okay. The stupid long, I live. 45 minutes away from the stadium and get the Longhorn Network because I didn't have to run. didn't come with your driver's license? TV. Ridiculous. I thought they might have no. comped you a uh, you would think, membership. Yeah, I'm probably more mm-hmm. lucky to get the Texas A&M Aggie Network. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I thought personally, uh, I, I mean. Was, I was listening to it. I mean, I thought personally, I thought that the announcer was going to be more biased than, since it's the Longhorn Network and that's the Texas. But I feel like they were pretty even. Think that I don't know the Longhorn Network to me is stupid. I think uh, you know, a university like them having their own network is dumb. So I'm glad that it's going to be gone. Hopefully, with their move to the SEC, I know it that. Is, you know, I agree with Texas A&M fans. Like they could be a thorn on your side to have like a network based on entirely on them. Well, I don't care if the announcers were pro Texas or not, because that's just how college baseball is. Like, if you watch the LSU stream, it's two LSU employees. But hey, now the, Lynn Rollins has some great lines, so I like, think that he's unbiased. Oh, dude, tonight he said that ball is <laughs> oh, higher a than a fire ant on a, <laughs> Yeah, that was uh, that made me. <laughs> he, he said something about a fire ant on No, a, no, it was it. like whenever K. Beloso got a hit, he's like, K. Beloso is yeah. hotter than a fire ant on a fever blister. That's what it was. That's pretty good. I ran on a favorite And then the That's other pretty... one was like hotter than a, what, like a, a watch at a pawn shop or something like that. <laughs> this man is the goat <laughs> of announcing. Like, I love watching every LSU game just because of him. Yeah. Yes, but the Longhorn Network will die a slow death. 
upon Texas's Good. entry to the SEC yep. because they are like the they 11th join most relevant team. ESPN Network. <laughs> yes. I was about to say CBS, yep. but I forgot that's going to be All gone. I'm saying is if I pay for ESPN Plus, I should be able to watch the number one ranked college baseball team any anytime they play. It's ridiculous. Between the D1 baseball streams that didn't even work and the – in the Longhorn Network. Yeah, the quality oh, was on. pretty poor on the D1 baseball. Yeah. I mean, somebody I was like, I was like not, streaming not it on YouTube, and my gosh, the quality was so bad. I wouldn't even yeah. pay the dime to watch it. Well, you know where you got to pay a dime to watch it, but it's going to have crystal clear, lifelike quality. It's if you're watching it at you. And you can with our favorite sneak peek, and of course, the things. I can play. Uh, I don't know if y'all can still hear me. I'm having internet connections right now. Uh, can, y- can y'all hear me okay? <laughs> Are, yes, yeah, back? I, we got yeah, you yeah. and we can see the promo. And yes, you can't okay. beat being at the game, you know? Just ask us. We yes, use so, this. <laughs> uh, yeah. Live sports is great on television, but the feeling of being at the arena is a priceless experience. That's where our friends at SeatGeek are there to help you find the best tickets at the best prices. Not only can you get tickets to sporting events, but you can also get tickets to concerts, comedy shows, musicals, and more. Tyler, are we going to be catching a musical down there in uh, Bayou Country, maybe? <laughs> uh, no, I hate musicals. I'm not- Sorry, SeatGeek. I'm only going to be using this for sporting <laughs> events. <laughs> There's a comedy club over where I live. I'm going to hit up SeatGeek, see if I can get some tickets to the comedy club. Go, go have myself a nice laugh. Um, I was going to use for my Nickelback concert, but it wasn't on there. Oh, dang. Come on, Seeky. You got to do better. Nickelback, Nickelback doesn't support oh. Seeky. You can go on there now, but you couldn't buy the uh, oh. you couldn't buy them initially because Ticketmaster uh, has the dynasty. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Well, Most take down Ticketmaster like... and use Seeky. You use promo code BELLYUPSPORTS. Get $20 off your first purchase. First purchase. Like Wade did, so, sign up for a new account, use a different phone number, different email. You know how you know the drill. Get that twenty dollars off. Um, visit SeatGeek.com, enter our promo code at checkout, save twenty dollars off your first purchase. SeatGeek, life's an event. We have the tickets. I almost said life's an event. We're just playing in the sand. Um, <laughs> <the last> <laughs> shout out away. <laughs> That's your golf motto too. Just playing in the sand. Hey now, I'm coming for you when we play the next black. Now it's gonna be personal. Hey. We've learned now by breaking news. This is also going to be breaking news. Our uh, Jacob has been working uh, in secret, hasn't told us. Yeah, he's out there hitting golf balls right now. Also, just, that's least, why I didn't want to be on the show. He's doing a midnight round. Yeah, really. Elise was at Santa Maria today for an event that her company yeah. was giving drinks out at the golf tournament. And she said that, A, we have to buy a house in Santa Maria, and B, that oh, it's awesome. we need to play golf there. And I was like, well, I can play golf there, but I probably can't buy a house there. You can no, probably shatter your, there, uh, but... shatter your like back door. It's a it's a beautiful course, but uh, it's pricey, and it yeah. is stupid crowded. Fucking, is. Like, I remember, we, Wade, you and I would go to the range during the summer there, and, it, I mean, it's like you'd be fighting for a spot on the range. That's how crowded yeah. it was. No, it's definitely um, the nicest of the, the public ones. Well, I guess ones. we could cross that out of about... potential whack places. <laughs> we'll yeah, we were, we were talking about Pelican Point would be a good spot. I might be yeah, playing be... there next month for work, so I could scout it out. Mm. Okay, I like might it. might go play a practice round then. If, if Whenever we get our site, tell me what it is, and I have to go up there and play a practice round. Or Beaver Creek. That's always I was going to say Beaver Creek. Beaver Creek's a fun place over there in Baton Rouge. Oh, looking at my notes, uh, Tyler, take us away on our March Madness preview, updated bracketology. Yeah, we do have an updated bracketology that's changing by the minute as uh, it's champ week, uh, the greatest year, uh, week of the year. And then we'll hit uh, the March Madness as selection show is just six days away. Uh, so I'll give you the bubble teams. Uh, the last four buys are Boise State, NC State, Pittsburgh, and Jacobs boys. Penn State is in the Penn tournament State? right now. What? And then uh, last four in is Mississippi State, Utah State, Rutgers, and Nevada. First hey, four out yet? Just, uh, just yeah, qualified. they did. They just they did. South, they Alabama. South Alabama in the Sun Belt Championship. Uh, first four out: Oklahoma State, Wisconsin, Arizona State, and surprise, surprise, North Carolina, a team that was ranked number one in the preseason, is in jeopardy of missing the NCAA tournament. They're going to have to make some magic. I feel like they have to get at least to the to the ACC championship if they want to get into the tournament, maybe even potentially win just to get an automatic bid 
to feel safe about. And the next four out, if you're in this one, you're pretty much over. You would pretty much have to win your uh, conference tournament. Michigan, Charleston. Charleston's a team that really got off to that hot start and has really struggled as of late. Clemson is out in the next uh, four out, which is surprising. Their record's good enough, but I guess their their strength of schedule isn't good enough uh, to be in the tournament. I think they're like 22-8, and eight, and then Oregon is the last next four out. And then the number one seeds has changed. Uh, Kansas is the number one overall seed. Alabama is still a number one overall seed, but UCLA is now a number one seed after their big win uh, on Saturday night. Uh, Pac-12 after dark action, beating a really good Arizona team. Like I mentioned, Alabama is the one seed in the South. And then to finish it off, Houston is uh, number one uh, after beating Memphis at the buzzer. The uh, rankings come out on Sunday, right? Uh, Yeah, selection uh, show will come out Sunday. I think uh, in the evening, it's like a five o'clock show our time. Okay, so we'll so have to like give you our breaking Monday news, show. or we just do it Monday. <laughs> yeah, we'll probably do it another Monday show <laughs> because uh, I work and I want to be a part of this. <laughs> okay, well, we need you a part of it because you're the you're the expert with the That's bracketology. True. We're just, just gonna be like, what, uh, we like I'm these just, jerseys more. <laughs> I'm rolling with Miami. Just we're we're Miami? going for it again. Going with Miami this year. Tyler, who's your early? You think? We've been talking a little bit that Alabama is a fraud. Um, I think all of the, you know, investigation going on into the program might be impacting their playing. Uh, or a lack of Brandon, investigation. <laughs> that too. Uh, I have a feeling as soon as they're they're out of the tournament, boom, all of a sudden something's going to happen to Brandon Miller. Uh, and possibly uh, some some heads will roll on the, on the uh, athletic board because they kind of cover all this up. Um. Tyler, what what are your thoughts? Uh, who's your pick? Yeah, like you mentioned, I mean, I was really high on Alabama, and then like whenever the Brandon Miller news said, this has just just been a completely different team. I mean, they've had close calls against South Carolina and Auburn, and they just lost on the road to I think a Texas A&M team that's not really getting a lot of credit uh, for what they've done. I think that Buzz Williams has done a good job with this program. Uh, Book line, they're going to be a lock to be in the NCAA tournament. I think that they're my pick to win the SEC tournament. I think that they can make some noise. I think that Kentucky could be another team uh, in that conference as well. But uh, a couple of weeks ago, we were looking at this. I said Kansas, uh, but I'm going to actually change my pick. Uh, This is probably going to change the week goes on. Just this is what college basketball has been. I think that Houston is a team that I think that it's going to get the job done, cut down the nets. Uh, Kansas – I mean, this has been a team that I thought was really good, and they just got blown out on the road uh, by a really good Texas team. So there's a lot of good teams. Uh, I'm, right now I'm saying Houston, uh, but whenever it comes uh, next Monday when we talk uh, more about it and we, when we get the bracket, it's going to change. Uh, but there are some teams. Uh, I don't think ultimately that a one seed is going to win the national championship. It's just Never like happens. been Never happens. this crazy of a year. I think that there's going to be some eight seeds that make a run like North Carolina did last year. Uh, Duke could be a team that could, could be that uh, this year. Uh, Gonzaga could be a team. I know that this is a team that we've all talked about, but they're not on the one seed line. There's not a lot of pressure. And they're they're going to be the number three seed. Like I mentioned, Texas A&M is a team uh, that I think that can make a deep run. So uh, we'll learn more. I'll, I'll talk more about it uh, on Monday uh, show, uh, but – this is going to be a crazy and wild turn. I think that there's going to be a lot of upsets. So pick upsets as it always happens, especially the 12s, maybe a 13 or 14 or potentially a 15 like St. Peter's, but, but we'll see. Wade, do you have a pick for us? I do, and it's a team that I mentioned briefly a couple weeks ago, but I feel like we're not hearing about them at all as a national on a national level, and that's UCLA. I mean, yes, they're number two two in the AP poll. They're um, on a 10-game win streak. They seem pretty consistent. Uh, veteran bunch that made a surprise run when they were true freshmen. Now they're juniors and seniors. I think they have all the right metrics to make a run, although it does scare me picking a West Coast team because we haven't seen a West Coast team other than um, Gonzaga make a deep run as of late. But I think they can defy that. I think Arizona – could as well, but they typically disappoint in March Madness. Um, so I'm going to go with UCLA as a surprise team for now. And I think that if Kansas can kind of right the ship 
Um, to me, they're probably the most talented team, but I'm going to go UCLA as my, my pick for the show. Okay, so we got UCLA, uh, Houston, and Miami. Sticking with Miami. I'm rolling with them this year. Picking them to win it all, and they're probably going to let me down like they did a few <laughs> years ago. Um, don't have much else. We'll wait on the John Morant drama <laughs> in the NBA until Jacob's back on the show. Um, so we got to give Jacob some hate for that one. He's, uh, I did say, see that he was taking a step back. I think he's taking some time away, which is probably what the young man needs right now. I think he's in the spotlight. He's trying to be too much. Uh, he just needs to take some time back, get some good mentors around him, really, because he could go down a very dark path really quickly um, with, with what he's doing. Uh, so hopefully he, he writes this ship because he's a fun player to watch. And, um, uh, but we'll let we'll uh we'll let Jacob talk about that next time he's on the show. Um, before we get to the TMZ Sports segment, I've got the NASCAR Neil segment. And let's see here. Let me find it in my text messages. So, NASCAR Neil segment. William Byron gets the win today at the Pennzoil 400 at Las Vegas. He led 173 of 268 laps. It was dominant factor along with his teammates Kyle Larson, who was leading with six to go when a late caution came out on the caution, all the leaders except Martin Truix, who uh, in the fourth pitted Byron was first off pit road and started up front and managed to get the lead going to start to finish on the first of the second of the two overtime laps again with the overtime. I don't understand how NASCAR has overtime. I think Uh, it's if they're in a caution on the final lap, you can't finish on a caution. So then you go to, you just keep restarting it until you get out of a caution. Gotcha, gotcha. So also to note, Hendrick Motorsports finished one, two, three with Alex Bowman getting third behind Larson. So congratulations, Hendrick Motorsports. That's our NASCAR Neil segment. Uh, we don't have dogs of the week because I was so upset from Max Homa that I didn't pick one. But maybe this week we'll throw out our players picks and we'll put that one on Twitter for us, Tyler, instead of the dogs of the week. Uh, but TMZ Sports segment this week is brought to you by our friends over at Fanatics. Um, if you head on over to fanatics.n3n6tx.net slash sports scramble, you can help the podcast out, get all your gear. You got baseball season starting up. You got college basketball, March Madness. Uh, you can get you some new jerseys for the NFL draft when your favorite player gets drafted by your favorite team. Um, of course, uh, the 24 ship is usually the weekend code, but when you're listening to this, head on over to fanatics, use our link. Um, is linked in all of our shows. It's linked in the YouTube bio and the YouTube description. Um, it's our Twitter, LinkedIn, or Twitter link tree. You can find it there. Wade just bought some sick gear for the cruise using our Fanatics link. So thanks, Wade. Um, That's right. Representing. So head on over to Fanatics. Use our link as is shown right here on the show, or you can find it in the episode description. TMZ Sports Segment of the Week. We've got Red Sox star Justin Turner drilled in the face by a pitch during spring training. Needs 16 stitches. Um, Took some stitches. 16 stitches. Yeah. Took some stitches. Needed 16 of them to close the wounds. Suffered in the hit by pitch, but he's doing well now, according to his wife. Um, A lot of swelling, no fractures, and clear CT scans. So that is uh, that's good to hear, but he got a drilled in the face. Watching the replay right now, whoo, yeah, don't want to get hit in the face by a fastball from an MLB pitcher. That's for sure. So, um, but that's all I've got this week, guys. Y'all have anything else to close out? The- no. Nah, okay. God. Well, we appreciate everybody watching. We appreciate everybody watching. Uh, if you're on YouTube, hit that. Subscribe, like, comment, share. Hit us up on TikTok at Sports Scramble Podcast, on Twitter at Sports Scramble. Uh, Tyler's saying throw the thumbs up on the video, let it ride, share it to your friends, help us out. We appreciate it. Uh, we hope everyone has a wonderful week ahead. Thanks for listening. <laughs>